Hey guys, Ray here. Welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today we are looking at the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. So this is a very expensive power station. They actually just sent me this as a loaner. This is gonna be a little bit different video because I'm not gonna go into testing each specific feature to see if it works. I'm gonna show you really practical uses of this. I'm gonna show you how I can hook this in to run my whole house electrical panel. Right now I've got a battery and a power system running my entire house. I'll show you how this compares to that power station. And uh, this definitely has some benefits over the current system that I have running my house. So I'm gonna show you how, I'll hook, how I can hook solar panels into this. Now, one benefit of the EcoFlow is if there's no sun and if the battery is low, shady conditions, you can still have power. And I will show you how you can do that in case of an emergency and when the sun's gone. Also, this is a great power station for camping and for your RV. If you've got a large RV with a 50 amp plug or a 30 amp plug, this will work for you. And if you're sick of replacing your old RV 12 volt batteries, I'll show you how this can replace your primary 12 volt RV battery. So if you want to have some fun, come on. All right, let's do a quick run through of all of the ports and different outlets. So the video here will be divided into specific segments. So feel free to jump around. So one thing I don't like about this system, this unit is it only comes with your AC outlet. So if you want to connect solar into this, or if you want to use the 30 amp RV plug, I needed to buy these separately from Amazon. So that's too bad they didn't just throw them in. But here's the Anderson connector for your 30 amp uh, 12 volt plug. There's also a ethernet plug, it looks like, for remote control. There's a barrel pin, a 12 volt, five amp plug. This is less common. The screen, I like the screen, it's very clear. You can show the power coming in and the power going out. We've got the USB-C ports, the USB ports, the 120 volt port, and we also have 240 volt outlet. It'd be great for your uh, 200, running your entire house. Here you have your 120 volt, 30 amp plug. On the back, we have some extra battery ports here. Here's where we can connect the AC charger. Here are two separate MPPT solar charge controllers. We'll show you these in just a second. And this is a new port designed for the Smart Home Panel 2. If you wanna use that as your as a emergency backup panel in case the power goes out. I like these doors, how they just slide in. Well, it has all the specs, specifications on this one. <clears throat> so let's first hook up solar and I'll show you how I'm gonna hook that up. Cause solar is like the coolest part of this cause you can get free energy from the sun. So here you have an XD, I believe this is like the XD60 connector, yep. So I love that there's two separate solar charge controllers. One charge controller is if you have like maybe some small solar panels like this one behind me. But if you really want to ramp up things, you can plug up to 150 volts of solar panels here. You can really connect a lot of power to this. Oh boy. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Okay, so EcoFlow sells a foldable 400 watt solar panel that you can use to charge this. But those foldable solar panels are pretty expensive. So I'm gonna show you how you can get almost 10 times the solar for the same price as that small solar panel. Okay, so these are 325 watt used solar panels from Santan Solar. I'm not gonna test these panels here, but I have another video where I tested these used solar panels and they work just as good as the new ones. So I picked these up for about $85 shipped, but I think the minimum might be 10 panels but 10 panels would work great for this unit if you want to maximize the solar. So I'm going to use this charge controller port because these are larger solar panels. So I want to make sure I'm not going over the 150 volts. That's the key here, or I could damage the unit. So if I look on the back sticker, each panel has an open circuit voltage of 
to 41.1 volts. So I got some shade here, but even if I have shade, it should get still pretty close to the 41 volts. During shade, the amps is what really is affected. All right, 36.1. Now, if I connect the positive to the negative of that panel, then these panels are in series and that will double the voltage. So let's try that real quick. <clears throat> okay, so I've got one large negative terminal from this panel and one large positive terminal from this panel. Yeah, 72 volts. This voltage can get really high if you add mul multiple of these panels in series. You wanna make sure, connect these at night or cover them. Uh, the sun's pretty much down right now but feel free to watch the other video if you want to see how much power these solar panels can produce when the sun's out 25 watts right now now it looks like it won't accept anything over 15 amps but many times these solar charge controllers will you can connect more than 15 amps to them but it won't uh, except any more than 15 amps. It'll clip anything extra off the top. But let's look at how I can connect these in parallel. So you can connect them to par in parallel if you don't want the voltage to go up, but you want the amperage to go up. So if you're getting close to the 150 volts or close to the 60 volts in the other port, you can use these types of connectors. So instead of using positive and negative, I'm gonna first go to the, both of the positives and connect them both here. That hooks both the positives together. And it can hook both the negatives together here. And then I got one big positive and one big negative. So the voltage should be around 36. Let's go ahead and measure that. Current will be double when I uh, connect this into the port. Watch out puppies. Oh my gosh, get out of here. 35.8 volts. So if this was my unit and I wanted to use this as an emergency backup option, what I would do is I would order 10 of these large solar panels. There's a whole bunch of different solar panels on their website. And what I would do is if I had a panel similar to these, I would hook three of them in series and then I'd hook another three in series. And then I'd have two strings there and I hook those two strings in parallel and connect them up to this port right here. And then with three more solar panels into this other port, this other port can't go over 60 volts. So basically I'd hook three solar panels all in parallel and connect them into this port. So because they're all in parallel, you won't go over the uh, 60 volts here. I will be over paneling it a little bit. So right when the sun comes up, I will start accepting power right away. Now it'll start clipping some of the amps off the top uh, when if I have perfect sunning conditions, but I'm okay with that. But feel free to ask any questions in the comments or leave any feedback. So having an RV is great in case of an emergency and you need to get out of town, you've got beds, water, electricity. So this is my RV. I've got a really nice power system here that I liked a lot. One bad thing about this system is I had to do it myself and it gets kind of complicated. This is really easy. All I do is instead of using my shore power plug to plug into the shore, I can go camping anywhere I want and I can plug it right into my power station. What I would do is I'd put my solar panels on the roof permanently and then run the solar wires down and I can plug the solar power right into the bottom of this unit. And so I'll have solar and power wherever I go in my RV. But if you wanna use this power station as your primary 12 volt RV battery, you're gonna to wanna to use this port here. This is 12 volts and can supply 30 amps of current. So here's the Anderson connector I purchased. You can disconnect these leads and then uh, connect the positive and the negative here. So in your RV, you've got your battery leads that you connect onto your battery. So instead of connecting them onto the battery, you're now gonna connect them onto this port. And I've tried this with other power stations with the 30 amp plug. And with 30 amps, I can run my slide outs, I can run my jacks, I can run all, everything that's 12 volts in my RV. So basically just plug this into here and then uh, hook your battery cables onto these cables. 
Maybe you can use a nut and a bolt to connect everything here. Okay, now that we've got the power outside, let's see how I could hook this, how I would hook this up to my main electrical panel. So this is my main electrical panel right here. Currently it is being powered off this inverter and this battery bank. So I'll tell you why this system can be better in some ways. So I'm not gonna go into all the details on how this system is built. I have another video on me installing this system. But let's look at how I can connect the EcoFlow Delta Pro to my main electrical panel. And this is how a normal main electrical panel works. You have your main power coming in, and then it goes through these circuits, and it'll go out to your bathroom, your kitchen. So normally power goes out from these circuits, but it doesn't have to. So this is what's called an interlock kit. And you can have an electrician install one of these fairly cheap. You can actually send power into one of these breakers as well. So most of these breakers are going out, but this one is actually sending power in. It sends power in and then it powers all of these circuits, pa can power my entire house. Now this is a little special piece because this uh, circuit is in on position and it's powering my entire house. And that will ensure that my grid power is currently off. Because if I had this powering my entire circuits and my grid power was on, I could send power up into the power lines and if linemen were working on the power uh, during a storm, I'd be charging the lines and uh, that could put the linemen in danger. So right now it's off, but I can turn it on only if I turn this off and then this uh, slides down and it'll allow me to turn the grid back on to power my house. So right now my grid, my whole house can be either powered from grid or an outside source. Right now my outside source is my inverter here, but it can also be my EcoFlow Delta Pro. So this is where you could get an electrician to install uh, this, uh, this specific outlet. <clears throat> he can maybe put, he can put it on your wall somewhere probably near your electrical panel. Then you can buy a 240 volt uh, little cord, extension cord, that has an end similar to this. And this one can plug into this outlet here. And from, the, from this end, it can plug into the receiving outlet that will in turn send power into your entire house. So this is called an interlock kit. So you can ask an electrician, asking for an interlock kit and outlet and, and they can install that for you. So you can also get like a sub panel, a critical load sub panel. So I, I don't like critical sub panels because you have to really choose which circuits from your house that you think are critical. I like the ability to power my entire house here. In, in case of an emergency, I can turn everything off and I can choose which circuits are critical. So suppose uh, my mother-in-law moves into the basement in one of the bedrooms and they've got a CPAP machine. Suddenly that room is critical load. All right now I'm on Right now my entire house is using 925 watts. So this EcoFlow should be able to run my entire house, no problem. Okay, so what happens when the power goes out and the sun is not out because it's a big storm? So that's a pretty realistic scenario. That's where EcoFlow really stands out. So if the battery is dead, there's no solar, they've got what's called the dual fuel smart generator. It can run off propane or gasoline. Basically, you just plug it in to the battery port in the back, and if the battery gets low, the generator will automatically will kick on and start charging the battery. In Utah, I think I could run like nine days on solar. And then if there's a cloudy day, uh, I could run on gas. So a system like this is more designed for everyday use and everyday power savings, as well as long-term power outages. It is permanently connected to my house, Whereas the EcoFlow is really designed for temporary emergency power outages. And it also is nice because it's a mobile power unit. Hey, hey, Roxy, easy, easy. So what do I think of the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3? So I really like the solar input. 
I like that it has 240 volts and it's somewhat lightweight. Now, I haven't tested uh, whether it can handle a imbalanced load between the two legs of the 240 volts. So if it can only do like 2000 watts on each leg for a total of 4000 watts and like the loads have to be perfectly balanced for it to work, that's gonna be a downfall of this unit. So I'm gonna test that in the future. I'm up against a deadline. I have to go, to, go out of town for the next three days, but I will test that and I'll put that in the description down below. And I really like that you can connect that gas generator that it will automatically kick on if your battery gets low. I don't know any other uh, power station manufacturer that has that built in. Special apologies to my mother-in-law. I love you, mom. Anyways, if you're interested in purchasing any of these items, I have a discount code and some links in the description, as well as all the early bird deals that they have right now for the next month or so. Thanks a lot for watching. See you around.